Hello everyone and welcome back to WSO2 API Manager series. My name is Kumar Gaurav and I'm back with part 2 of overview of API v4 portals. So let's start. So in the first part we have covered about the overview of publisher portal. We are we have seen how to create an API and how to manage the API lifecycle. Now we'll see the overview of developer portal in this session. Developer portal is basically used by application developers to discover the APIs, creating an application, subscribing to the APIs and to generate the API credentials followed by the API testing. So we will be covering about the developer portal features as shown here. Like we will see about the landing page, the login screen, APIs listing, tagging, subscription, tryout console, comments documentation and SDKs. We'll see about the application listing, creation, the credential generation, typically the OAuth keys and API key, sandbox environment and subscriptions. We'll also see how uh, a developer can change their password and a new developer can create an account via developer portal. So let's see a, a quick look of different sections of developer portal. So this is uh, the default screen of the developer portal. So once we navigate localhost 9443 dev portal, we'll see a screen look like this. Next, we have an API testing console. So once we have navigate to the particular API, we'll see a testing console, uh, something like this. And finally, the applications screen where we can see the uh, the list of applications to be listed there and we can follow we can proceed further uh, with the the uh, available options or the operations as available okay so let's have a, a demo to be started so we'll see in the demo a deeper dive of all the features as we discussed so let's begin the demo so first we'll navigate to developer portal So it should be localhost 9443 slash dev portal. So we can see there are a couple of APIs uh, that are listed here. There is an APIs option, there is an application option, and there is a sign in button. We can uh, filter out the list of APIs based upon the prototype uh, prototype or the production. We can also search the APIs via different options like content, name by API provider, by API version, context description tags api category and api property okay so we also have an option for the tags like if we uh, click on the particular tag then we'll see the api's listing is getting filtered out if we click on pizza then pizza check api we click on mock that means these api's have been provided a particular tag so tag is basically used to filter out the list of APIs in a particular category. So let's say we create five APIs for, uh, uh, let's say the development environment and uh, five APIs belong to the UAT environment. Okay, so this could be one of one way of uh, saying this, but uh, alternatively, let's say we have, uh, let's say user management APIs. So let's say we have five APIs that belong to user management or the users uh, section and there are five APIs that belongs to uh, the payment section okay so we can tag those APIs users payments so that in a single go we will able to see only those APIs that are required this is very helpful in case we have a lot of APIs and we have to filter out and to quickly see a particular API okay so next uh, so once we apply a tag, this is getting filtered out over here as well. Let me just go here and see both of the APIs. Okay. There is also possibility that we can create a particular tag and we'll attach to both APIs. Then by clicking on that particular tag, it will list both APIs. Okay. So now uh, we'll see uh, the details of the API. So let's say we click on this particular API. So this gives an overview section. So 
this is uh, like the URL of the API where the at the particular gateway which it has been published. So there is a try it option. Uh, the, this is a business plan that has been provided to this particular API. We can download the Swagger definition file from here. And this is the tag as you can see. And that has been uh, attached to this particular API. Once we click on tryout console, it opens uh, this screen. With the help of that, we can test the API. So this is the kind of a security which is applied. Okay. So currently it says you have to subscribe to that application. That means uh, although this is publicly available but uh, listed, but we have to uh, this user must be a valid user for API testing. Okay. So these are the uh, gateways. As of now, we have one gateway. These are the endpoints for at which the API has been published. These are the default resources. So we can create a particular resource and restrict the API access to particular resource as well. A very cool feature available with WCO2 API Manager version 4 that it provides the Postman collection to be downloaded. So we can easily download a Postman collection and import in the Postman to initiate the API testing. As opposed to the previous version, this feature was not available. So this is one of the very good feature. By clicking on open API definition, we can also download the Swagger file from here as well for this particular API. Next, we have a comment section. So as of now, there are no comments, but we can a developer can attach a particular uh, comment to particular API based upon uh, their experiences. Okay, this will help to improve the quality of API or API access, or if developer is facing any cha challenges, any bugs, developer can report and accordingly the uh, the backend team can fix that. Documentation is also important. There is, uh, as we discussed uh, in the publisher portal overview, there is a facility to attach a documentation against particular API. Also, we can attach a SDK to uh, for the integration purpose. Okay, so some of the features will be available post login. So let's log in and see. So this is the login screen. This is the same screen which is available to the publisher portal so let's log in with the default credentials and see okay so these are the different sdks available so once we click on download we'll get the respective sdk okay okay we can add a comment here as well okay we can add a good api and we can make a comment this comment will be available publicly when we log out we will go to the mock test and go to the comment section and you can see the comment is published. We can also attach a workflow that there should not be like a blank comment to be available there. Okay, it's, uh, so this was all about uh, related to APIs as we have seen. So we have gone to the listing tags subscription option. So if you go to subscription, it shows that uh, there is a subscription wizard as well. And uh, subscription basically helps this API uh, to be protected with, uh, with to be grouped with a particular application. To access any API, uh, this must be attached, be subscribed to an application. Okay, as of now, there is no subscription is there. Sorry, as of now, there is one subscription to the default application. We can also create as many applications and we can subscribe to it based upon the kind of a, uh, a requirement. Okay. Next, we have the tryout console. We have gone through the comment section, the documentation, and SDKs. Cool. Now, let's go to the applications. Applications are nothing but uh, a way to logically group your APIs and to provide a seamless access. So, for example, there are, as of now, let's say we have two APIs, okay? And we would like same credentials to be used by both of the APIs, API consumers, to access the particular API. Or let's say there is a consumer uh, who would like to access the same set of APIs and would like to have a different credential. So we'll create a new application for that particular customer or the consumer and create the credentials and we'll share with them. So now, as you can see, if you go to the application. Okay, so in application, so just a minute. So it, this shows the, who is the owner, the policy. It has unlimited policy. So. We can change the policy based upon our requirement. Okay. 
and uh, the workflow status is active that means workflow uh, we can attach a workflow approval workflow for this particular application subscription etc okay so if you go to the application then uh, overview section shows the basic information about this uh, application here is the production keys so this section shows this is the way so as of now the keys are not generated so once we click on the generate keys option it generates the consumer key and consumer secret okay so this is uh, now generated and now uh, we can see the word tokens so this is the same screen basically so for testing purpose we can generate an access token and we can start we can copy and we can start using this access token to the particular api but in real scenario what happens we have to use the curl command or we can use the uh, the token api to generate the access token to use this api it could be a current type client credentials or the password okay so these are the token endpoint revocation endpoint these are the different grant types we can allow from here so if we restrict uh, a particular grant type then the uh, api credentials would be restricted to that particular grant type okay uh, callback url we can use this feature but this is basically used when we have a web server redirection uh, we can set this uh, the token expiry time 3600 seconds which is one hour user access token which is also one hour refresh token which is 86400 seconds id token okay these are additional features which is available in the api manager version 4 we are not going details as of now we'll be covering this in the later uh, sessions okay so api key so there is another feature which is api key based access so this is basically a static value that is generated if we click on this it will generate api key with infinite validity or we can specify the period as well in seconds if you don't specify it will generate the api key for infinite validity so let's say this key has been generated which is typically a jwt token uh, kind of uh, format okay and then we can use this api key to call the uh, api okay so the same way we have product sandbox keys as well so wso2 provides two different environments with the help of that you can use uh, same infrastructure to uh, have your backend two different backends like uh, sandbox and production with the same infrastructure setup okay now we go to the subscriptions as of now you can see we have this has been subscribed to one particular api you can also subscribe to other apis as well so we'll see subscribe to pizza shack so now if you go back to the application you can see there are the two subscription we can create a new application we, we can subscribe to one particular api we can generate the credentials and share it with the particular api consumer okay so that was all about the applications part okay changing the password so an admin user can change the password or a particular developer user can change their password from this screen they need to provide the current password new password and the confirmed password okay and save it and the credentials will be changed for that particular developer next create an account this is one of the important feature provided by wc2 api manager which is called the self sign up or self onboarding to developer portal okay by default this feature is not enabled we have to enable this feature afterwards this create account option gets coming here on the login window so once we create on this account so we have to provide a username so let's say we provide a username as kumar and we proceed to self register it mentions that if i do not specify a tenant domain you will be registered in the super tenant so wso2 api manager provides the multi tenancy where a user can be registered into a particular tenant so default tenant is the carbon.super and uh, we can create uh, tenants as well under which we can proceed for the registration so as of now we will be treating as a super tenant which is carbon.super so you can see this is the uh, user registration or user onboarding form first name last name password confirm password email organization and other optional parameters are there okay so once we fill these details the user will be registered although there are 
policies attached to the self registration like there could be a approval workflow okay or there could be a email based verification when when uh, where uh, a user will get an email on their account to activate the same they can register an organization so that the user can share the applications among them for the rapid and the faster development process okay so that's all all about uh, this uh, create account section and here it comes to the conclusion of this developer portal so we have seen all the features as available in the developer portal via hands on lab so thank you very much so thank you very much for your time and stay tuned for my upcoming hands on lab exercises on wso2 api manager version 4 you can refer to my blog links for useful contents and official wso2 api manager documentation as well and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates